Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about lectin lesson number two. How do they cause trouble? Now, we're introducing the concept of food as immunology. At the first layer, we always think of food as macronutrients like fat, protein, and carbs. And there's all sorts of different discussions about how we should do that. And more sophisticated folks think about also food as its hormonal effects. And so you talk about turning off insulin. But now we're talking about food and its effect on immune function. And we've come up with lectins. And as we talked about last week, lectins are the poisons made by plants to deter insects and animals from eating them. And over time, if you live in the same ecosystem forever, you get used to each other and the bacteria in your gut get used to them and your biome that in your colon gets used to them and so you have a synergistic relationship. But we humans have now invaded all over the earth and discovered all sorts of new foods that we aren't used to. And that changes our gut biome quite dramatically. And as a consequence, there are some of us who see, appear to be much more sensitive to foods and categories and you can tell that, for example, in wheat, where some people are quite sensitive to wheat, and they don't have celiac disease, but they sure feel better when they don't eat it. Well, we now know that wheat has been only with humans for eight to 10,000 years, but only for 70 years, since 1950s, have we had wheat with two grasses, genomes, uh, attached to it, making it increase the number of lectins. Well, what goes on inside you that makes lectin so virulent? Well, you're, think of your blood vessels and your fat cells and your white cells as all having little what are called toll-like proteins or toll receptor proteins. What they really are is barcode readers. They are little tiny radars. Uh, and they are observing everything that's going on in your blood to see if this is friend or foe and they're looking at you and at what's not you and they can recognize patterns that aren't you and when they do that they call for help by sending out cytokines all over your body and those cytokines then start inflammation but how does that inflammation start what we now know is that there's something called your immune system has two layers there's your very primitive layer your uh, innate system which we share with lizards and crocodiles, and our more sophisticated immune system, which also crocodiles have, but we're much more sophisticated in mammals. It's the adaptive system that makes antibodies and T cells that are precision weapons. But the innate system is like a kickboxer. It just fights back. As soon as there's an invasion and your l tiny little radars say, this is an enemy, your uh, innate system fires off. It's like one domino knocking over two, knocking over four, knocking over eight, and you have a cascade that explodes in virulence. And of course that requires very careful balancing to make it work. One of the pathways of that system that's called the complement system, and if you look up on Wikipedia there's a nice there's a nice reference in Wikipedia that'll explain it to you, but the complement system, and this isn't giving you a compliment, the complement system is what fires off with all these chemicals in this very delicate balance that has to be carefully regulated so it doesn't attack you, but that it can label invaders so that they can be gobbled up by white cells or punch a little hole in their wall or get them just damaged by one way or another. The lectin pathway and the mannose pathway is one of the alternative pathways into the complement system which means your body can tell when there are lectins coming on board and you set off the complement system. So this is no small joke. When we eat lectins we aren't used to, that, we're, that we have a virulent reaction to, we're going to set off our innate immune system. So food can be an immunological problem. What will work for me? Well, I'm beginning to think about how I eat food differently. If you read Scott Gundry's book, The Plant Paradox, you get a wonderful description. And I've finished reading it and I'm quite impressed. I think we're going to explore it even some more in the coming weeks 
and I'm going to give you some of the implications of how you can eat to get yourself to optimal health. So this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about lectins part two, how do they cause damage?